Today we are so excited to introduce to you the full Bible in MP3 audio format. And this is an amazing resource that is useful for people who cannot otherwise read or people who just want to listen to the Bible while they are traveling in the car at the leisure of your home. You can listen to the Bible in Hindi format. And this is the full Bible and it is available to you today for a contribution of 100 rupees or more. We will be happy to send this to you. Please contact us at the number or the email or write to us and we will be happy to get this to you. Order your copy today. God bless you. In that home, love it had no end. That's where we learn to. Thank you so much for tuning to our ministry today. As part of our home makeover series for the last two Sundays, and this is the third episode of this ministry, I'm sure God has been speaking to you on the various aspects of changes that we need in our family. We began our series looking at how God wants every home to have an atmosphere of praise, prayer, and worship. And so we create church at home, and every home a church. Secondly, we saw from the book of Joshua how Joshua declared to the nation of Israel that as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord, and how that implies to us today that our families need to serve the Lord. Today we're going to focus on how to make our marriages work and really become effective as per the biblical teachings. No matter how much we prepare, no matter how many books we read or how much premarital counseling we take, or we cannot really be fully equipped to enter into this relationship called marriage. So it's a journey that we go through and things that we learn as marriages progress to the future. And so let's hear what God's word have to teach us about making this marriage work as God has designed for us. Continuing on our series on home makeover, today we're going to focus on how to make marriage work. And the test for our study is taken from Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 to 25. Just a couple of months ago, me and my wife Usha, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. And we were reflecting upon how we began this journey. And we realized two things. Number one. We had no idea of what we were about to enter into, the challenges that is involved in marriage and how to really make this marriage work. And number two, we realized that we are glad that we didn't know much about what we were going to enter into and learn the hard way. And many of us have learned lessons the hard way. And it is interesting to observe that in the society that we live in, marriages are being destroyed at an alarming rate than ever before. Couples are being attacked and many young people today think that they cannot even think of getting married because of the fear that is upon their lives that marriage is almost impossible in the society we live in. And that is because, I believe, Satan is targeting the God-ordained establishment or the institution called marriage. Because he knows that if he can destroy marriages, he can destroy families, he can destroy society, he can destroy communities, Satan can take control of the world. And isn't that what is happening in the world today? Including the people of God in the church are being attacked and their marriages are shaky because Satan is bringing division into relationships. When everything is said and done, whether counseling or psychological treatment or whatever is being said and done, ultimately we have to come back to the scriptural teaching of what God has designed this institution to be. Let's look at what God's word says about the problem of marriage. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 we read here, The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, there was no suitable helper found. Two things the Lord God says it is not good for man to be alone. And God having created all of this wonderful creation, Adam was still found to be helpless. Adam was still found to be lonely. There was no helpmate for Adam. 
He was a lonely man. Isn't that the paradigm even in today? That we are surrounded by everything that we need in life. The comforts of life. The finances that we need. The houses we need. The cars that we need to drive. Everything that we need, we have. And at the same time, deep inside of us, we are lonely. Just a couple of months ago, I was talking to this couple and the wife was telling me how her husband is very busy in life and he is always busy with things in life and at the same time, he was a lonely man deep inside. A married man who is very busy in life and yet so lonely inside. What was the problem? The problem comes to the uh, basics of relationship with the one that God has joined the person to. The problem lies in the relationship to the person that you are married to. Marriage is so important. Relationship with your wife or your husband is so important to fill that most important need in our life. Every one of us need to be loved. Every one of us need to be respected. And that can only happen when the relationship is strong with one another. The problem is that man is so busy and at the same time he is also lonely deep inside. So when we come to verse 18, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. God is speaking here. It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper that is suitable for him. Two things we see here. First of all, God is taking the initiative to meet this deepest need of his creation. God himself is taking the initiative to fill this vacuum for Adam and created a helpmate. And that's the second thing we see that Eve was the solution to the problem of Adam's loneliness. God amazingly knows our heart. God knows the needs of our heart. He knows desires of our heart and he himself moves to fill those needs for us. And how important it is for us to depend on God. How important it is for us to look to God for fulfilling the needs of our lives and and not try to make our own efforts to make things happen. And that's what we see in the world today. People are afraid to enter into a covenant relationship of marriage and they're trying to find their own ways of filling that gap of loneliness and there is even mechanical partners that have been designed and created so that they don't have to have all the concerns and issues and challenges of working through a marriage relationships. Folks, there is no escape. There is no shortcut other than the design that God has made for us. He has made a helpmate for you. You see, when God created the creation, He brought all the animals and everything right in front of Him. God gave Adam the right to choose the names of all of these animals. Adam had the privilege to name all of these animals. What was God teaching Adam right there? God was teaching Adam the ownership. God was teaching Adam the lesson of ruling over the creation that God has created. God was teaching Adam to be a leader. God was teaching Adam to be the head. God was teaching Adam to be the one who is in charge. You see, when you have the right to name something, you have the right to own those things. And so God was teaching Adam the lesson to enter into a new phase in his life. And second thing we see here is that even as Adam was given the right to name this creation... When he looked at these animals coming one by one, you name it, when these animals walked right in front of Adam, they all walk in pairs. What was God putting in Adam's heart that when he looked at himself, he was alone? He was without any partner. And so God was creating inside the heart of Adam this need for a partner. It is amazing how God works and how God trains us and how God prepares us to become what we are in life. Without a woman, a man could never 
be in love. Without a woman, a man can never be a husband. Without a queen, a man can never be a king. And so God amazingly made this provision for Adam and brought Eve to Adam's life. Number two, having seen the problem of man's business and his loneliness, what is the solution? And the solution is this in verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 to 23. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. You see, the problem is loneliness. The problem is emptiness. And God himself finds the solution. The solution is a partner who completes our lives. A partner who makes us perfect. God's answer to Adam's loneliness is very simple and at the same time it is also very profound. He created a partner for Adam who is like him, who is for him and yet very different. When Adam looked at Eve, he saw that it was his own kind but at the same time he said, wow, she is beautiful. She was pleasing to his eyes and he automatically Fall in love with Eve. Adam's deep loneliness is met by a woman who was created by God. From this we learn that the loneliness of our life can only be filled with that which God has created for us. For a man to fill his emptiness of heart, emptiness of life, God has made a partner for him. The Bible does not say that God created another man to be his helpmate. The Bible does not say that uh, God created another group of people to fill that uh, vacuum for Adam's life. He created one particular person who is so unique and who is so distinct. Born of his bone and yet so unique. You see... We have this one person that God has given to us. One person that God has chosen for us to live with, to cherish, to love, to care, till our lives are separated by death. This is the God-ordained institution. This is what we need to fall back to and realize. See, we have no choice of demanding what kind of partner we need. We have no choice over whether I need a partner who is seven foot tall or six foot tall or I need a partner who is fair in skin color. I like a wife who have blue uh, blue eyes and blonde hair. No, we have no control or choice over that. God who decides what kind of partner he's going to bring for you. Do we trust God for that? When I look at the matrimonial advertisements in the newspaper, sometimes I laugh because of the requirements that people put on the kind of partners that they are seeking. We need a a person who is of certain height or a person of uh, so much of um, education or so much of skin color and so forth. You see, God never asked Adam what color would you like your wife to be. God never asked he, Adam, uh, what, uh, what kind of hair she should have, whether she should have long hair, curly hair, short hair. No, God in fact put Adam to sleep and he could not even see what God was making. But when Adam opened his eyes, he saw her beautiful. You see, that which God brings to you is always beautiful. That which God creates for you is always perfect and lacking in nothing. When we take our own initiative to to make things happen, when we think we have the control to manipulate, we always fall short from God. Only God is the one who can accomplish the perfectness that we need in our lives. Genesis chapter 2 verse 22, God brought her to the man. How many of you believe that God can bring your life partner? Maybe you are a bachelor listening today. Would you trust God? Would you ask God? Would you begin to pray and ask God to bring that partner that you are waiting for your life? 
God is able to bring that person to you. First of all, we looked at the problem, the problem of the business of life and yet so lonely at heart. And how God takes the initiative in our loneliness and he brings a helpmate, a partner as the solution for our loneliness. And thirdly, the design. How God expects us to make this marriage work. If we are lonely, God has a solution. He has a life partner, a helper to help us in our relationship. And how are we to make this marriage work? The design that God has planned. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, and he be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. From these two words, we find four key components that makes marriage work. And so number one is leaving. One leaves the parents to join the other. There has to be that living or a separation from the family in order for the marriage to work as a couple. We find many marriages fail simply because of the unnecessary infringement of the family, the in-laws, getting too much involved in that relationship, making the couple not function in their relationship with one another. The second one we read here is cleaving. Not only is the man to leave, but also to cleave. When you leave something, you have to cleave to something. When you leave something, you have to embrace something. Here, the Bible says the man is to leave and cleave to his wife. And the third one is intimacy. Become so close to one another, they are intimate to one another, and they become united as one. Fourth principle we learn here is transparency. That they do not have nothing to cover, nothing to hide from each other. That they don't feel shame of each other. There is absolute transparency in this relationship. And so from Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 to 25 we read number one, leaving leaving his parents and number two is cleaving cleaving to his wife and number three is intimacy a relationship becoming one with the other and number four is transparency naked and not ashamed they become one in that relationship the only way a couple can establish their own family is to live his family and to build his own and that's how God has designed this marriage to function. Cleaving means to be glued together as one with the wife, not attached to anything else. To be united to his wife. And to intimate means to be together over the years, to become a team in everything that they do, whether it is ministry or decisions in the family or whatever is the involvement of the husband must be a team effort as wife and husband. They become one flesh. And finally, the transparency that is required, that there is nothing to be hidden from one another. There is no secret to be hidden away from the other. There is a, a transparency in the relationship. We can see in our world today that these components are missing in the marriages. There is no more a leaving of his attachments or relationships or families or whatever to join and to cleave with his wife. And there is no more of that intimacy that God wanted in the relationship. And definitely there is a lot of issues in the areas of transparency. And so we see the problem of divorce. The problem of relationship is primarily because we have drifted away from this God's design of marriage. And so this kind of marriage is only possible when we have a commitment to that kind of a relationship. When we have a commitment to God's word that tells us to live behind other things and to cleave to your wife and to have that intimacy and to have the transparency in the relationship. We have in India a brand, the Ambassador Car. And sometimes I wonder why these people don't want to change their, the look of the car or the design of the car. But over these years that I have seen this car, they have only one model. Many people have approached the company and suggested that they change their look. They change the design and the model. But the ambassador company, 
decided that they are not going to change. They are not going to compromise. They are going to stick to one model. We have the Royal Enfield bike as another classic example of sticking to one model in spite of the pressures of other companies coming up with new looks and new designs. But look at Ambassador. They are a success in the market. Look at the, the Royal Enfield bikes. They are still a success in the market. So the key to success is long-term endurance to stick to this one model. Stick to the one model that God has given us for marriage. And that is to live our parents and to cleave to our wives and to become intimate and become one with our partners and to become transparent in that relationship. And make sure Jesus is in that marriage. Jesus become the center of this marriage. A healthy marriage to work for a lifetime has to have God in the center of this marriage. You see somebody said a three chord code cannot be easily broken. And so in our relationship between the relationship of the wife and the husband there has to be the third chord of God as the center of this relationship. Let's bring God into the picture. Let's bring God's word into the picture and let's come back to the foundations of how God designed this marriage to work. As you're listening to me today, perhaps you are not a married person and you are contemplating on getting married. Let's make sure that as you enter into that relationship, you bring these principles of God's word and stick to the basics of the model and the design that God has for the marriage. Maybe you are already a married person and you are struggling in the areas of relationship with your wife. And, and today, may I urge you to pray this prayer with me and ask God to bless your marriage. Ask God to bless that relationship with your wife or your husband. Pray this prayer with me. If you are a married person, take a moment to recommit your relationship with your spouse. Search your heart to see if there is any issues of leaving or any issues of cleaving or intimacy or transparency that needs to be addressed so that you can build that relationship again. If your marriage is in some difficulty, pray for God's healing power to come into that relationship. And how much we need God's healing in our marriage today. If you are a widow or a widower, thank God for the good memories of the past life that you may have had. Ask God to give you the grace to live your life in a way that is pleasing to God. If you are a single because you have experienced divorce in your marriage, pray for that God will give you an intimate relationship with God. Pray that you restore that relationship with God once again so that the emptiness of your heart, the void that you have in your heart of the loneliness that you feel right now, God can once again heal that void. God can once again perhaps bring a solution to the problem of that loneliness. If you are a single parent today and listening, you are managing your family alone without a husband or a, a without a wife and, and your life is a struggle, ask God to be the parent of your children. Ask God, God, you be the father of my child. You be the one that take care of my children. If you have never married, pray that God will bring to you a partner of his choice. His handmade partner that will fill the need of your life. Many years ago when I enrolled myself at a Bible school, the, the founder of our seminary, even as I was 18 years old, encouraged us to pray for the life partner. That even at that age, God would sovereignly begin to work and prepare the partner that is suitable for your life. And he, I remember him saying that if you marry the wrong person, no matter how educated you are, no matter how much finance you have, you may never have the success in ministry or life unless it's the right person that God has brought to you.
men that have walked away from their wives to come back lord today we speak for that miracle to happen lord jesus speak to the heart of everyone today may your holy spirit convict us of the sins that needs to be forgiven and, and healed and restored lord jesus every life be touched by the power of your holy spirit we pray that every